Hello and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to give you a tour of this Google Sheets Task Planner and To-Do List Template. It's available for purchase on my Etsy shop and you can find the link in the description down below. So it's a to-do list. It's pretty self-explanatory, but once your list starts to get longer, managing it starts to be a bit more complicated and actually looking at it starts to be a bit more daunting. So I created a few functionalities to help with that and I want to show you all about them. So let's get into it. So what you're going to get is just one empty sheet that looks like this one that is called to-do list. So you can create different copies of this sheet for different areas of your life. So you can separate all of your tasks, all of your to-dos in different areas, in different months, in different weeks. You can just use this however you want. All you have to do is right click on the sheet name and select duplicate. And then you're going to create a duplicate. If you double click here, you can change the name. Then you can also change the name up here. Now, the first thing you have to do is you have to customize your template. So you have three drop downs right here that you can customize. The priority drop down and the status drop down, you're going to customize in the customize here sheet. And both of these are going to be shared between every single one of the tables that you create. So whatever you enter here is going to update the drop down elements for the priority and the status in every single sheet that you create. Now, this one is going to be unique for every one of your sheets. And you're going to customize it by scrolling all the way over to column V where you can find this section and you can change both the title and the drop down element. So as you can see, it's called category and it has the drop down elements that I updated here. But these elements are completely unique to this one sheet. As you can see, the to do list has an empty table and has no elements. And you can call this column whatever you want. And it's also going to update the title. So this is just a way to make each of your sheets even more unique. So filling it out doesn't require much of an explanation. You're just going to write down your task. You're going to select an element from this drop down, a priority. You're going to set a date. So if you double click on these cells, a calendar will appear and you can select a valid date from there. If your date is overdue, it's going to turn red and then it's going to be added to this overdue tracker. So this cell is going to keep track of how many tasks are overdue. And once you check them and you mark them as done, then they're going to be removed from this overdue tracker. And then you can select a status element. The days left is updated automatically whenever you select a date. So today is June 20. And if I select that, then I have zero days left. So if I change that to June 25, then now I have five days left. So this is completely automated. You have room for notes. And then today's date is updated right here. As you can see, these cells have been tracking the number of pending and done tasks. So whenever I mark a task as done, those numbers are going to be changing and this progress bar is also going to be moving automatically. Now, if you scroll to the right, you're going to find this pending task summary. So this is pretty much just pulling every single task from this table that is still pending and it's showing it right here. So you can just get rid of the tasks that are done without actually deleting them. So right here, you can look only at the pending tasks and completely ignore every single task that is done. And you can sort this table by these different options. So you can sort it by due date and ascending order. So you're going to find the upcoming tasks at the very top. And then if you want to sort them by priority, you can do that by selecting priority and it's going to sort them in alphabetical order. If you want to control which option shows up at the beginning and which option shows at the end, what you can do is you can add a number right before the label. If you add one, two, three, and four, this is going to make sure that one is going to be showing up at the top and then two, three, four. So you can control that order by adding a number at the beginning. If you don't, it's just going to sort them by alphabetical order. So this is a pending table and it's also showing the number of tasks that are pending and what percentage that they represent out of all of the tasks. And then if you continue scrolling, you're going to find this drop down that you built is also tracking the tasks pending for each of these categories. In my case, these are categories. I wanted to name them that way. So this is tracking the number of pending tasks for each of my categories. And it's also showing a progress bar right here. So 
if these categories, these elements, whatever you customize them to be, are important to you and it's important for you to track the progress for each, you can do that in this little section right here. And then if you continue scrolling, you're going to find a table similar to the pending task summary, but this is a done task summary. So it's also showing the percentage of tasks that are done and the number of tasks that are done. And you can also sort this table by any of these options in ascending or descending order. So this is just pretty much for your own reference. If you for some reason want to look at your done tasks and get rid of the pending tasks for a moment, you can do that in this table. It's completely optional. So those these two tables are just used for you to have better visibility of your tasks. So you can play around with them and sort them in different ways to decide what are you going to tackle next. And then finally, you have these highlight filters right here. So this is my favorite functionality because if I for some reason want to just quickly highlight anything that's related to the demo video, I can select demo video right here and it's going to highlight only the tasks that are not done that have a demo video in their category. And then if I want to maybe filter it out a bit more, I can select only the ones that are urgent. And then it's just going to select this too. And then maybe let's change one of these. So then I only want to select the ones that are in progress. And now it filtered it a bit more. So whenever you add a filter, it's going to get more and more specific. And if you remove the filter, then it's going to act as if this never existed. It's going to completely ignore anything that you left out blank. To leave it blank, you can just delete it as you would delete any other cell. And then if you want to maybe filter it by due date as well, you can just double click on this cell and select a date. So let's select June 25 and now it's only filtering this row right here. If I delete these two, then it's going to filter only by date. So let's select July 2nd and then it's going to filter everything that's related to July 2nd and then I can filter by demo video and then July 2nd demo video. So you get the idea. And then these filters are also going to work for the pending tasks table. As you can see, you have the demo video and July 2nd. Everything that has demo video on July 2nd is being highlighted. And it's also going to work for this table. So if I remove July 2nd, then it's highlighting this one. If I select product, then it's going to highlight the ones that have product in every single table. So the way you change those colors, I'm guessing you're going to want to change them. Start by highlighting one of them. So just select a filter and highlight something and then select any of these individual highlighted cells. So I'm going to select the task one and then you're going to click on format, conditional formatting, and it's going to show you all of these options. So you're going to select the one that has that color selected, the one that starts this way. So be really careful not to change the other two, just change the one that starts like this. So look at this. Pause the video if you need to and select the one that looks like this one. So once you do that, it's going to bring you to the rule. Don't change anything else, only change the formatting style. If you touch this formula, you might break everything. So just avoid touching this and just change the color to any other color that you want. And it's going to immediately show you a new highlight color. So just click on done. And then that rule has been changed and it will always be highlighted in purple. Now, each of these three tables has their own rules and their own color. So you can change the color for the pending table as well. Just click on any highlighted cell, click on format, conditional formatting. It's going to bring you to this rule right here. So you select that rule and then you change the color. And then you can do that for this table as well. Format, conditional formatting, and then you change the color. Now, I just want to mention a couple of things. So if you select any of these options and forget to select a task, it's going to be highlighted in yellow and it's not going to be considered for the progress bar. So just remember to always write something here and then remember that any overdue task will be highlighted in red. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to message me on Etsy. I will be happy to help you. You can find the link to purchase this template in the description down below.